Hello everyone, welcome back to the Kingdom Vanilla Let's Play. Now I haven't done a little video in a while, and it's not because I haven't been working on this world, I have, and I feel a little bit bad that I haven't got anything to show for the moment. I'm actually redesigning a whole farm system, and that takes a lot of time creative, I think about 9 days into recording that now. But I thought in the meantime, I'll give you something which will be slightly quicker for me to record maybe, but equally as interesting. And I thought you would enjoy this. Something I came up with today at work, and I thought it'd be a really cool thing to try out. And if it works, it'll be amazing. So, what I want to do today is do a nether portal lift system. Now, this system will only work in spawn chunks, which we are at the moment. And if you don't know about spawn chunks and how they operate, how to find them, how big they are, and everything else, I have done a video on this before, and I'll link it in the description again if I remember. Now spawn chunks basically always loaded and there is a 12 by 12 square on the original creation of the world which is always loaded and from bedrock to sky limit. So I'm going to combine a couple of things that you can get from properties of that into a really nice way of having a portal here maybe, a selection grid, or say I want to go to y equals 200, hit it, walk through, go into the nether, wait a couple of seconds, walk back, and when I come back I'll be at y equals 200. And then have the same sort of selection up there and come back. I thought it would be a really neat idea and I'm going to set something up as a little test and I'll be back to you but I'll explain the concepts and the mechanics behind it as I go. So, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so let's look at the principles of what I'm going to be doing today. I've got two portals set up so far as a lift so that one's the bottom one, this one's the top. Um, I can do more above and more below when I'm ready. But the principles are, I'm going to turn one of these off and turn another one on. So this state, I'm going to see which one's my native portal. So the portal I'll go to automatically no matter what. And I've actually moved the portal on the other side for that one. So this one will all go through to one portal. So if I go through to here, you see that I'm here, I moved some other ones and I was playing around with it. So we go through this one now, the native portal is whichever one it connects to first and um, the one that you will default go to and that's this one up here and um, the lower one down if they to regenerate on the land. So if I do the same over there I'd come through over here when I come back. So now if I change this one just using a normal source block oh, didn't want to do that, oh well I can replace that and then that one up there should be the new native portal and that will demonstrate what I'm going to be doing with this design. So if we go down here through next portal, Feather Falling is awesome. So this one will now connect to the same portal on the other side, like so. And now it should go back in the air, a hundred or so box up. And it has. Very good. Proof of concept done. Now, this should all be spawn area, I'm just going to assume it is, I won't map it out this episode at least, and I don't need to, um, so I'm definitely within 8 chunks of that, um, so I should be within it. Now, the fun thing is now to automate this, so I need some kind of select panel to pick which height I want to be up to, um, we're going to use this for some sort of viewing platform, or just a fun thing basically. So if I just block that one off, I haven't got a source bucket on me anymore for water. So let's come down here. And I've got to think of a way, because spawn chunks are always active, if I turn on or activate a redstone timer or some kind of circuitry and then go through to nether, this circuitry will still be loaded. So really what I want is a selector. I'll hit it. There then puts a timing circuit in, so it gives you enough time to walk through this portal then a system to break the portal, as in put a source block in it and then another one up there I would have the same sort of system to break or make a portal which would then ignite that one now two shouldn't be that hard now the real challenge today should be doing more than two so I want one here, one there and one up at build limit and one down there maybe um, maybe in the mines, could be a really cool way of getting to my um, strip mines. Um, I did make a little hole there to get down, but it could be really cool actually to have a way in through this. So, yeah, this good idea, and 
I'm going to think about a timing out and a way to get this to turn on and off and I'll be back to you with some results. Okay, done some thinking and the first thing I want to do is set up a way of turning all the portals off. So I'm thinking that if I push a selection button go through the timer, I know I'm going to be doing that and then once the timer is finished timing for me to go through the portal it's got to turn all of them off I could do it so it turns the one that was on to off and then turn the new one on but I think it may be easier just to turn them all off even if they're completely empty so you need one tick pulse of water going into the portals and um, so it won't spill out everywhere else and if there is a portal there it will destroy it and then there will be a timer and then it will detect which button you pressed I hope and then turn that corresponding portal on afterwards so I'm trying to think and I'm going to start off with the dispenser at the moment for the water so I put them here and then I need this to be pulsed twice so I'll do the same sort of thing as I did for my cow farm that I was doing and I'm just going to do some blocks down here now the easy way to do this is to pulse it once with a one tick pulse and then again with a three or two tick, I don't remember now. So get some repeaters on me and they're the repeaters. So I'm going to put a repeater there and a two tick because that's going to be the resetting pulse. I also want a block here and then I'll do a block above because I need the power to be sent through. Now. The handy thing of this design is that one timer can manage everything. And let's have a look. I've been playing with this in creative. So put one there. And that should be it, I believe. Let's test that. So I was looking in my test world, I had a whole load of um just a whole line of blocks up. Now to start off with I want a redstone there and then I can keep going up with just a whole vertical wiring now the really cool thing about the spawn chunks is that this vertical wiring can go up to um, build limit and not um, be out of loading range because the whole chunk is loaded doesn't matter about the player now this is a way that this wouldn't work as such in a non-spawn chunk because the time wouldn't work but with this it all works and you can go as high or as low as you want which is fantastic if it all works out today so if I just set up a just a pretend time on the bottom so timer goes around Oop, didn't want that, have I got a lever on me? or a button is probably easier let's go for a button actually let's get down there so I hit button it then resets all of them, so let's have a look here. Is that going to turn off? Yep. So at the moment, they're all off. And if I just light this portal quickly and dump a bucket of water in here, we'll just test if it works. So all I want to see, I don't matter, doesn't matter how. Um, actually, I did miss a block, didn't I? I missed a piston. <laughs> that would be a mistake. Uh, let me see. Let's go in. Mm, that should be better now. I think. I hope. So, it doesn't matter how loud it is, how... Well, it matters how slow or quick it is, really. But how loud it is doesn't matter at all, because you'll never ever hear the system go off. Unless you've got multiplayer on. So... That works like a charm. Very nice. Now, I can make it so that each portal is just a random number away from each other so this wiring could then be um, customized so that it wouldn't be like this all the way up and it wouldn't be like this bit it would change a bit depending on what level your portal's on but I think it would be nice and simple and just count it out in a correct way so that it will look like this at the bottom of every portal now I'm not having any sort of structure up there at the moment they're just portals so I can just place them in a convenient place and then build them around so that would be nice and we know that works now to turn them off and that should keep going all the way up um, to the next one and so so I'm just going to go build up a couple more of these portals with this system 
and to see if they can all be turned off correctly. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so I've gone and done a few more portals, and we're on about 95 at the moment on the Y, and top one's about 230 or something. So we get rid of this spider before he kills us. There's actually a beacon around us somewhere. I don't even know where it is. I've got too many of them. Um, that's given me this uh, a jump and speed, which is quite nice. But up there it doesn't. So these are all turned on at the moment, and I'll just go up there very quickly. Damn. <laughs> I haven't died in ages. Well, you can see from here anyway, that's the top one. And they come down, down, down. I'll just go back up there now. This is the top one and this should all work correctly they've all got their water in so if I just go down to the bottom now safely um, you can see the wiring goes all the way up and which is very long there's nothing else you can do about that, it has to be like that uh, let's just get down hopefully we don't get killed by something so this button here is going to represent our timer like I said before I hit that and all of them should now be off including the top now the problem I'm having is thinking about how I'm going to turn one back on now the timer and turn them off is easy I've done that already as long as these two up here work as well but what I need is to relight ooh that one hasn't gone has it no water in it okay that would make some sense <laughs> I know the top one has water in it, I'm sure it did anyway. So turning them off is okay, turning them back on is a little bit different. Now I could have four different vertical wiring things just like that one over there. One goes to each floor. Um, could be a way of doing it. Um, and then pass it up if need be, I'm not sure about that and be quite bulky. I really want to find a design that I can then show as a tutorial. So more of a mod modular one rather than just a random the more portals you have the bigger it gets kind of thing. And this one's off as well. That's, that's good. So that all works fine. So it's going to be the right challenge for that. But I think I will now go and just do a timer and just do as much as I can for now. I don't know if I get all of this finished today but I will try. Um, lately vanilla hasn't been getting many views compared to Feed the Bee stuff and no, a lot of YouTubers have said we can't really afford to spend so much time on vanilla but I am anyway and hopefully you'd appreciate that and uh, like's always good for that so I'm going to just find a little timer I only need a very simple one um, probably just need a I don't know actually how long would it take for you to go through and then back probably uh, I'm not sure actually, how long does that take? It took maybe 5 seconds to go through and then 5 seconds to come back, so you probably want like a 5 second timer, 10 second timer. A 10 second timer would be nice, and um, that shouldn't be that hard. So I'll be back to you after I've done that, and I'll think about how to do different layers as well. Okay, so I've been a lot of thought about this, and trying to make it practical. The moment we're at the top, obviously. And I've set up one portal that can change. Um, could do it easily with this one. I'm thinking that this whole thing may be a better thing just to do with two portals. So you'd have one down the bottom and one up here. Not a selection process because I was looking at downwards instance wise. And if you don't know what that is, it's just a basically a fast way of moving a redstone signal downwards. Um, any instance wire moves the redstone signal really fast or instant um, without any delays at all in repeaters or anything else over long distance and I wanted one to bring it from the top down here because what I was thinking was that if I had a little display like this on each level then I could have it say that this one here at the moment is actually selected as floor 2 and there isn't actually any other selections I've only wired this one up uh, just an example and all I wanted to have was that on any point you can hit the button for whatever floor you want it will then track which button you've pressed so depending on which one you've pressed depends on which time I think it will go to afterwards but all of the buttons you press will go to a central timing circuit like this one here I'll just 
put a, a mock up one here and then when that has its a right delay after you've gone through the portal it will then reset all of the portals like I've said before and you could do that on any level so by pressing one button or any button at all and it would do the reset um, doing the put back is a lot harder but it's the reset I wanted to work and for that I just wanted to have the time at the bottom and then have an instance wire so if I pressed it up there the signal will get transmitted down here the time will then work and then reset them all. Um, it doesn't seem to be that practical because downwards instant wires don't really seem to work, not the ones I'm looking at anyway. And this is the one that I was looking at for a normal one, so that if I put a resting block there, you can see that it pushes all of them along and it works quite nicely. Um, and that's all well and good until you get the bud effect in. And this arrives because as you have I'll show you this actually. Let's break up of these. Let's see, let's see. If I what I was trying to do is get a downwards one of this. So same sort of thing but down. So starting off you just have um let's just say one of them there. And if you build it up like so, you're gonna say use up these blocks. So to put it up correctly, I need to have something to put it against. So if I put piston against that, the redstone block will not power that piston. But now to put the next block on top, if I just get on top of there, what I want to be doing is putting the next one on there, and then put a piston on top of that. But to do that I've got to do that again. So I'm not complaining that it's hard to do this, it's just a little bit fiddly. And so the next one needs to go there. So you got to get there and then put the next piston in. Not like that though. And this is where I sort of hit the problem. When I move this one, that one moves. Because it's a block update on a bud switch. So that's actually powered from above and when it detects block swap, it does that. Now the thing with this that I found really weird and must be a guaranteed bug, if you remove the block, that says that that you can remove that you can remove that now there's nothing near that that is a completely legit floating extended sticky piston um, which I just find mind boggling <laughs> I'm sure you can do it other ways before but I've never seen it myself and you can only make it go back with a block update so that's very weird. Could be useful as some sort of trap, but in single player I don't really do many traps. Um, so that's the difficulty I was having. It would have been a really nice way of doing it if it worked. Otherwise I have to do what I've done on some other farms where I've had um, really long lengths of glowstone, so the downwards instant wires, but then certain points after the signal starts to fade you have to then put an extender in it. And if I put the timer on the top Say I'm having to move the whole thing 150 blocks, as you can only do that for redstone signals in the spawn chunks, then I'd have to extend it 10, 12 times, and in that it would just be, you know, each time you extend it, it's another 3 or 4 ticks. So you're looking at like 40 ticks extension, which is like what we have here already for a whole timer. So moving from the top one, you probably have to wait another like 2 minutes where you can walk through the portal, and that time you might as well go up a ladder not really impressive anymore. So I think I may look at with your feedback, I'm sure some of you have some really good ideas, I really do rely on feedback because there's always something I haven't thought about, you know, we spend hours and hours as YouTubers designing these things and thinking about them but we can miss things, it's quite easy um, when we get fixated on what we're doing. So if I can't get this to work on a um, just a selection thing, so at the moment that one relights that one up there. So if I just light this one. Ooh. Okay, that was on timer. So yeah, this timer goes around. I'll show you this actually working. So I hit that one. It goes through the timer. So that's your delay to get through it. It then kills this portal. And this wire going upwards then turns the next portal on. So if I just reset this manually, I'll just go through and we'll see if it actually works. I have not tested it yet. 
that dink dink is to reset the water. I'll manually relight the bottom one, and then I'll push the button. So that one isn't on up there, I can guarantee. Hit the button, go through. Hopefully there is enough time. Oh, maybe not. Oh, maybe just. So let's wait for a couple of seconds, and I'll go back. Now, in theory, I should be on the next level. And I am. Proof of concept complete. Now, if I did that, it would work completely fine if I just had that bottom portal, a one toggle to go up, and then all I'd have to do would be hitting a button up there to turn it back off, or just coming down the other way. It could be a way of doing it, actually, if I had it so... I might have to do that, actually. If I had it so that the up way will do how I've done it, so timer, instant wire upwards, because instant wires upwards are so easy, and infinite extendable inside your loading range. But to come back down, I'd probably just have a shoot, like a water shoot or a cobweb thing to get back down. It could be a really nice way of doing a viewing platform. I might do that as a thing on its own. Um, but doing the selection is a really hard thing to do because I would have to do these pillars of wiring for every single one, I think. That's what I think of anyway at the moment. Um, so if you have any ideas, I'd love to know. Anyway, I hopefully you've had some interesting thoughts from this. I hope with all my Minecraft videos, they give you something to take away and think about and something you can expand on your own or relate to something you've already done and uh, even I haven't succeeded today I've, I guess I've succeeded in making things go upwards and um, that's definitely a proof of concept done because that wire I could extend up there and do the same thing doesn't matter which portal I'm actually doing it to moving upwards works um, moving downwards isn't so fun um, I could have it so that there's a timer so that once you've come back through the portal maybe a five minute timer or something then it turns that portal back off and turns this one back on um, but then it wouldn't really help you would it? I don't know leave your suggestions and comments I'd love to hear them um, hopefully I can work on my farm I've been doing for another episode so hope you have enjoyed hopefully I <laughs> haven't got too much done today um, too much thinking I think so thank you very much for joining me guys and I'll see you next time.